Hello everyone, welcome to our Daily Mana. You know, there's a technical term that we heard online and that word is sin zone. Sin zone is actually the scenario where whenever you message someone and that person whom you sent your message does not actually put attention or give attention to your message or maybe that person purposely ignored what you have sent to him or her. And so when we experience being sin zone, oftentimes we are frustrated because we feel that that person did not give attention to what we have sent them. But you see, this experience is actually not common in our day-to-day, but also the prophets and people back then in the biblical times have experienced it when it, came, when it comes to God. And so today, I want to share you God's word and allow you to delve in in what this experience was during their time. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly open it with me in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 2-5. to The word of the Lord says, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. The Lord's answer, Look at the nations, and watch and be utterly amazed, for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. You know, during this time, this was actually the time where it was the transition between the Israelites being captives of Babylon to Assyrian. And here you can see this prophet named Habakkuk. He was actually questioning God and telling, Lord, are you there? Do you, are you even aware of what we are going through right now? And you see, oftentimes in our lives, when we go through bad things, we feel that we have all the right to question God in all of those things. And oftentimes, when we do not see any answer in our questions, we feel frustrated. And especially for us, because we want an immediate reply from God, especially when we pray to Him earnestly. But you see here, once we look at the situation of Habakkuk, we can actually see that he asked these questions because he was confident of who God is and what God can do in his life. But you see, the answer was not immediate for him because God is still God and is not required to answer our question, but he wants us to put our faith in him because he's a God who is always there and who cares for us. And the second question that Habakkuk has here was, Lord, do you not care for us? When looking at the aspect and perspective of what Habakkuk was going through this time, he was just asking God, Lord, why are you allowing such thing? Why are we going through violence? Why are we going through injustices? And if we're going to look at his question, his question was very much valid. But if we're going to look at this passage and, it, and we look at ourselves, you see, we tend to question why God would allow such things to happen in our lives. If he cares for us, then why do bad things happen? But you see, God allows these things to happen because He wants us to understand and He wants us to know that God, that God can use trials to strengthen our faith and mold our character. When we can't understand a thing, remember that God is up to something. And lastly, when Habakkuk was questioning God, he even asked God, Lord, are you sovereign? You see, in our life as a Christian, we may not see what God is doing right now. We may not see the bigger picture. But you see, God is still sovereign and He knows everything. When we feel like we are sin sown by God or God is not concerned about the things that we go through, about the trials, the problems that we have, we can still trust Him completely because He is God. Now, while I was observing about the questions that Habakkuk has during this time, I was asking myself, Habakkuk, why are you so confident to ask all of these things towards our God? And one thing that I've observed here is that Habakkuk was so confident to ask this question, to throw these questions to God, because he knew who God was. And he understood that God is someone that is far bigger and greater than all the trials, problems that he has. If we're going to think about the injustices that we have today and the problems that we encounter in our life, we can also imagine that amidst the injustice and suffering that Jesus went through on the cross, he trusted God completely. That no matter how painful the situation was, he knew 
that he can trust his Father in heaven. So in our lives, brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter how big the problem is, you can just ask God. You can even cry to Him. You can just throw to Him all of your questions. You can allow yourself to be mad at Him. But you can also trust Him completely because He is your God and He is unchanging. Allow me to pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for granting us this time. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity where we can understand, Lord, that in the midst of our problems, in the midst of the things that we go through, you remain the same and you are faithful. I pray, Lord, that you will continually minister to my brothers and sisters. Allow them, Lord God, to understand your comfort, your peace in their lives. And above everything else, remind them, Lord God, that you are fully in control of our situation. We may not know, Lord God, uh, why things are happening in our life or we often question, Lord God, your will. But Lord, remind us completely that you are still our God and that you are fully in control of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for granting us this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you.